soft metals that are in the drinking water and now in the soil, and that's affecting agriculture, and it's affecting wildlife. And uh, in what way is it affecting agriculture? It um, is affecting agriculture by occluding the sun, um, the man-made trails that you know develop in the clouds. Uh, occlude the sun and it uh, increases the growth of fungus and mold, stunts growth, stunts photosynthesis, uh, and the change the pH of the soil specifically. Pauline? Also that video so in uh, What in the World Are They Spraying? And you can see it on YouTube as well. You see the weathermen talking about that specifically. They're saying, oh, well, you know, they're kind of upset. You know, and they go, well, my military friends say that this is, you know, chaff, you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, what is it? Okay, that's uh, some of the geoengineer scientists from uh, San Jose speaking about their schemes to cool the planet. This is in 2006. Uh, there's Ken Caldera right there. There's Rosalind Peterson pointing at uh, the ongoing uh, reality. There's me and Rosalind. Um, so Yes, okay, thanks. And uh, geoengineering, Wikipedia just basically says the modern concept of uh, geoengineering is usually taken to mean proposals to deliberately manipulate the Earth's climate to counteract the effects of global warming from greenhouse gas emissions. The National Academy of Science defined geoengineering as, quote, options that would involve large scale engineering of our environment in order to combat or ca counteract the effects of changes in the atmospheric chemistry. Um, that's one part of it. Of course, there are space mirrors, uh, but what I've kind of focused on is the changes in the chemistry of the atmosphere. Uh, because again, what goes up must come down, and I feel that this is coming down into our environment. That's the most important thing for me. Whether their experiments are working or they're not working, there seems to be no concern for uh, the uh, public opinion and the health, what's going on with, with the health of the environment and people's health. You've got to think about the pilots here, um, what they see and, and the various effects they see in the stop and starts. How are they involved? Um, in my opinion, it's suspected that they're required now to release these man-made cloud aerosols in a more stealth fashion uh, over areas of dense population. Um, remember, if it were atmospheric conditions creating this effect, amid commercial air traffic, you would not see deviant flight patterns, accelerated speeds, and other anomalies from these planes. You just wouldn't see it. You would see, you know, paying passengers in a commercial jet landing and taking off and going through normal flight paths. That's what you would see. You wouldn't see these massive arcs. You wouldn't see it. It's actually going on. I know most of you already are past this and you know what's going on, but I just want to say that again. Um, this also connects to the cap and trade issue because this is um, a very unusual thing because we're looking at uh, the warming of the planet based on NASA's report of uh, contrails from jet planes warming the planet. So there's also that effect. If you are looking up and you think that's a normal uh, jet, commercial jet leaving a normal contrail, I guess you're going to believe what NASA is saying, that this is helping to warm the planet. Whether it is or not, uh, it's the excuse for things like cap and trade uh, or climate change. The reality is that the climate is being manipulated uh, and it's super, super advanced stuff. Uh, this is all classified information. I figured the best way to begin to understand it without reading a bunch of disinfo is to stand out there and watch these planes uh, do their thing. And I learned a little bit, you know, not much. I, le I learned that these planes are weird. Um, they have different color trails. Uh, I learned how they uh, really get active and uh, fly extremely fast um, before weather front systems. So that was really interesting to watch. and and pay attention to. That way you can say with conviction uh, when you're talking with somebody and you're explaining what's going on, 
that you saw it. You saw it once, you saw it twice, you saw it four times, you saw it ten times. So it's the same thing that's happening again and again. When a debunker approaches you or says this isn't true, you know, you've got problems, you know, uh, you, you know for a fact. So I had to do that work. I had to be on the ground to say, you know, and see these same planes. And there are color schemes of these planes, too, that you can recognize. Um, a recent story a month ago, a huge two-sentence uh, news story unleashed. It was on a Friday, as they usually do. The UN calls for higher taxes to combat climate warming. A top UN panel on Friday called for increased taxes on carbon emissions and international transport to raise $100 billion a year to combat climate change. The group led by the prime ministers of Norway and Ethiopia, oh, Ethiopia also said there could be a tax on international financial transactions. Um, so all of this is like uh, the larger picture, pulling back and looking at what's going on. You see these operations not only in Canada, not only in the United States, but across in Europe, uh, New Zealand and Australia, um, mainly NATO countries. So. Um, Manipulating weather and occluding the sun, it's not just about weather. It, by occluding the sun, there are all these uh, benefits for our pharmaceutical companies. Um, if you have a lack of vitamin D, you're susceptible to all types of colds and flus. And again, uh, viruses thrive in that environment.